We can tell you about justification, but we can't tell you about truth. There's nothing to be said about it. That is, we know how we justify beliefs. We know that the adjective true is the word we apply to the beliefs that we've justified. We know that a belief can be true without being justified. That's about all we know about truth. And, you know, justification is relative to an audience and to a range of truth candidates. Truth isn't relative to anything. Just because it isn't relative to anything, there's nothing to be said about it. I mean, tr truth with a capital T is sort of like God. Uh, you know, there's not much you can say about God. And that's why theologians talk about ineffability. Contemporary pragmatists tend to say the word true is indefinable, but none the worse for that. We know how to use it. We don't have to define it. In the absence of any kind of God to arbitrate who is correct when two people have a disagreement about what is factual, how do we come to a conclusion about what we, as individuals, are going to believe going forward. How do we decide who wins in a debate? Each of us individually can have our own system of logic by which we decide who we think wins in a debate. And we can believe that our system of logic is the most correct one. However, again, there is no objective standard by which this becomes true. And as long as there are other people who have their own standards that disagree with the ones that we have, there's never going to be a consensus on who wins. You might have a, a majority sort of consensus, but never a totalizing one. You're never going to have 100% of everybody say that the same person won if different people are following different logic that they apply to how they determine a victor. So if any individual spectator of a debate is just going to make their own decisions about who won or who lost based on their own system of logic, then how do the individuals within the debate have the sensation of winning or losing? Well, really it comes down to what their goals were in the debate. Let's say that you're having a debate with a mediator, and that mediator is going to make a determination on who won or who lost. Now, you as an audience member can decide to listen to that mediator and what they said, or you can decide that that person was wrong and you're going to hold your own beliefs about who won or lost. However, if you're one of the participants in the debate and your goal is to have the mediator say that you won the debate, then you need to appeal to whatever that mediator's rationale is for how a debate is won or lost. If your goal is to change your opponent's mind, then whether you win or lose depends on whether you are capable of doing so. If your goal is to change the audience's mind, then whether you win or lose is dependent on your ability to change the audience's mind. If your goal is simply to throw your ideas up against a competing idea and see if they hold up to yourself, then you can win even in spite of everyone else considering you to have lost so long as you come away feeling that you won. Now let me tell you about how I consider somebody to have won or lost a debate. Personally, what I hold in the highest regard is that whatever someone is saying is correct, provably. So let's say that two people get into an argument over something and one of them has all kinds of stats and figures which prove their correctness and the other person doesn't. Most likely, I'm going to come away from that argument feeling that the person with the facts and figures was the victor because they will probably have convinced me that they are correct. However, let's say that I go into watching this debate already knowing a lot of facts and figures about the subject at hand. Now let's say that the person who is on the same side that I am, uh, that I'm on, does a very terrible job of arguing their side. They don't bring up all the facts and figures that I already know. The other person, however, has a whole bunch of what they consider to be facts and figures. However, I already know that all of the things that they're saying are incorrect. I already could disprove all of their arguments and dismantle them myself if I were in the debate. Well, I think it would be unreasonable for me to come away with the sensation that that person won the debate when I know that the things they're arguing are incorrect, that there is no basis in reality for their claims. Now, let's say that the guy on my side is not absent of evidence, but has faulty evidence. His argument is straight up invalid. He is making incorrect claims in his attempt to come to the same conclusion as me. Now, I might agree with his conclusion, however, I don't agree with the logic that he used to reach that conclusion because those things are incorrect. Each one is individually its own conclusion. If you state something that is illogical, then that in itself 
is a, a point you're trying to make, which is incorrect. However, if you then make a conclusion based on that point, which is correct, then I can say, well, your conclusion was correct, but this part was incorrect. But those are two separate things. You don't have to regard that as all one whole. You can say, your conclusion was right, your logic was wrong. But in no way does this do anything to validate the other side whose logic and conclusions are wrong. I know this because I have already done the work. I can substantiate the reason that the other person's conclusion is correct, even if that person can't. So who am I going to come away saying won the debate? Probably neither person. I'll probably come away thinking that they're both fucking idiots. However, if I am going to throw my hat in with one side or the other, it's going to be at the very least the guy who I can say had some good points, not the guy who had no good points. If this guy says, uh, the earth is round because, uh, I like dogs or something, like, I could say, okay, well, that's retarded, but the earth is round. If the other guy says, the earth is flat, and then goes on and on and on about all his reasonings, but I know that all of those reasonings are incorrect, regardless of whether their opponent is able to prove that, that doesn't mean that that person made any good points. Their points are invalid. I know it because I can substantiate the other side. The reason I'm explaining all this is because I had a debate with this YouTuber named Destiny, and this was essentially the nature of our argument. I came in claiming that this person has a tendency to put words in other people's mouths. He does this by reframing the things that they have said in a way that changes the meaning of the thing which they have said. So I had said, now Destiny had previously gotten into an argument with Dick Masterson. I'm a fan of Dick Masterson. Don't necessarily agree with everything or even most of what he says. I like him as a comedian. I don't care about his political opinions or his punditure, really. But I watched this argument he had with Destiny. And coming into it, Dick makes the argument that Destiny is somebody who reframes the things that other people are saying and throws it back at them. Now, watching this debate, I thought that what Dick was saying was evident in the way that Destiny was arguing. I was able to make Dick's argument for him in my own mind because I heard what Destiny was saying, saw him reframing arguments and said, oh, he's doing exactly the thing that Dick said that he does. Now, Destiny had no counter argument for this. He just floundered and changed the subject and tried to argue about anything else at no point made any valid counter argument against what Dick was claiming about him. Now, did Dick provide any really substantial evidence to the fact that Destiny does this thing? That's debatable. I wouldn't say that he was extremely substantiating in it. He wasn't really given the opportunity to be because Destiny kept making him talk about other things. But regardless, I would not come away from that with the sensation that Destiny won the debate when I agree with the premise that Dick raised and can substantiate it myself and have heard no counter-argument from the other side. That, to me, is not winning a debate. So when Destiny came to me on Twitter and wanted to argue with me about something, I said, like, I don't really want to argue about this Dick Masterson video because I saw the way it went. It was just recursive and obnoxious. Uh, what do you want to argue about? He said, how about let's argue about the idea that Dick, quote, substantiated any coherent point during his argument. I responded, not a stance I hold with the phrasing chosen, so no. Destiny responded to that, so you are saying that Dick floundered and failed to make a coherent point. This is exactly what I'm accusing Destiny of, putting words in my mouth. Essentially what Dick was accusing him of. So we are kind of rehashing the argument in a way with different terminology. So the reason that this is a reframing of what I said is that, as explained, I didn't think that Dick necessarily had to substantiate his argument for what he was saying to be true and for all of the things Destiny was saying to be false. Dick had a good point that Destiny does this thing. I know it's a good point because I can prove it. Dick may not have proven it, but Destiny did not prove the opposite. He did not prove a counter to what Dick was saying in his argument because he can't because his stance is incorrect. Ergo, for Destiny to put words into my mouth by saying, oh, so you're saying Dick floundered and failed to make a point. No, I didn't say that. I said he 
you know, I said that I didn't agree with the exact words you chose, which are substantiated a coherent point. I think he made a good point. I don't think he substantiated it necessarily that well. It doesn't really matter. I wouldn't choose to even use any phrasing that is close to this to describe my reaction to the debate, which is why I said not with the phrasing chosen. I just don't want you to come up with the words that describe my feelings about the debate. I don't want you to do that. I will come up with my own words to describe my feelings about the debate. So for Destiny to then come along and say, oh, well, for you to say that you don't think exactly what I just said must mean you think this. And I'm like, no, it doesn't mean I think that. It doesn't mean that I think that he floundered or failed to make a good point. I think he made a good point. I don't think he was floundering. I just don't think he substantiated his point that well. But you didn't do fuck. You did nothing. You did not in any way counteract the point being made by Dick. Ergo, Destiny was putting words in my mouth. This is proven by this tweet chain. I just explained how this is proven. I then proved this within the debate. Now, in order to prove this, I had to prove that there is a difference between floundering and failing to substantiate. Ergo, I made the argument that the winner of a debate ought to be considered the person who is more correct than the other person. If one person makes a whole lot of arguments, but all of them are provably untrue, then that person has not made any valid points. They have not made any good arguments. If a person makes an argument that is true, however, they also say things that are untrue, well, they're still not making a great point, but they are making a better point than the person who has said nothing true. You see? Now, a debate like this would be pretty pointless, pretty obnoxious, even. You probably wouldn't want to watch a debate in which you already know that one of the sides is full of shit because you've already done the research and you already know that this person is coming from a position of complete inanity. Which is why I used the example of a debate between a flat earther and somebody who thinks the earth is round. No matter how badly you argue that the earth is round, the earth is round. We know this because it has been empirically proven through science, through facts, it is a, a thing that we have studied, we've come to conclusions. If somebody who thinks the Earth is flat makes a whole lot of arguments, they're all disprovable. None of them are good arguments. No matter if the other person who they're debating with can't disprove them themselves, it doesn't make them better arguments. They're bad arguments because they're provably untrue. This person doesn't know what they're talking about. Ergo, if I had to pick a winner between these two fucking idiots, I'm going to go with the guy who said the earth is round because to say that the guy who thinks the earth is flat is the winner is to say that it doesn't matter if anything you argue has any basis in reality just as long as you don't get out argued. That's fucking retarded. Now the reason I felt the need to make this video is that a lot of my own followers who watched this debate seem to think that what I am trying to argue is that it, evidence doesn't matter. That it doesn't matter if what you're saying has any rational backing or if you yourself understand the rational backing as, as long as the conclusion you reach is correct. Well, that's not what I'm saying because there's no way to determine that a conclusion is correct without rational backing. There is no way to say, oh, this person was right unless it has been proven. It has to be evident. There has to be research. There has to be scientific proof of it. If that is the case, and therefore you state this conclusion, which is provably true, then no matter what the other person argues, if it is provably untrue, it's not a good argument. You see? So again, none of this is to say that if somebody comes out and says, I think the earth is round because I, I like dogs, that I'm going to think that person's intelligent or that they fucking had a great point or anything. It's just like, well, okay, at, at least you know the earth is round. At least you have that going for you. But the other guy has nothing going for him if everything he says is untrue. Can we agree on this? Is this difficult to understand? Do I need to go through it again? Because I, I honestly, like, if, 
if you can't grasp this, if you can't concede to this, and yes, this is a very semantic argument, and the reason I think it's important to have this argument, because I haven't even gotten into that, a lot of people were asking me, like, why bother arguing about this? Because when you take what someone else says and you reframe it to not mean the exact same thing as what they said, you're no longer arguing with that person's point. You are now arguing with your own version of it, your straw man of it, who is easier to argue with. That is why Destiny uses this technique. Destiny does this because he can take what you're saying, reframe it in a way that sounds more extreme, more ridiculous, or, or just more far-flung, and say, oh, that's basically the same thing as what you're saying. But it isn't. Because nothing about what I say, in this context especially, necessarily says the opposite. Just because I don't agree with the exact phrasing that he used, doesn't mean that I believe the opposite thing as what he said. That's what he's trying to present. That's fucking crazy. That is how you take someone's entire point and make it something else so you can argue with it better and look smarter in front of your dumbass, sycophantic, fuckboy audience. So... Please, take a step back, think about what's happening here, what's really being said. Don't try to take it to some fucking far-flung extreme where, oh, Digibro's saying facts don't fucking matter. That's obviously not what I'm saying, you fucking idiots. Please, for the name of, in the name of God, be charitable to someone's argument because that's what you should do out of basic decency towards the people who you're talking to. God damn.